Hi once again, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. Today, in this video, I'm going to be doing a Corsair themed custom built computer. And we're going to start off here using this case. This is the Corsair IQ500X RGB QL edition mid tower case. This case comes complete with the QL RGB fans is 120 millimeter fans. This case ships with four of those fans, three in the front, one in the back. We got glass here, a glass panel here on the side. Let <clears throat> me go ahead and just pop that off. Comes off really easy. Undo these screws and it just pops right off like that. We'll just get this out of the way. See here a nice white theme going. Turn this around here. You can also see I know it looks kind of smoky, kind of hazy, but that's because the protective film is still on there. I haven't taken that off yet, but the front, the front glass simply pops right off top and bottom, lifts right out. There is a, there is a fan, a filter here that you can take off uh, if you so choose to, either for cleaning or you can leave it off so you have better view of your RGB fans there. Turn it around again here. And we have another glass panel on this side. Just undo two screws over here like we did before. And that pops right off like that. Comes right off like this. Okay, we have a dust filter here, a dust filter on this panel because we could also add three additional fans on the back side of this for better ventilation. There is also a top glass panel that is also removable pops right off like that. There's another filter here that is held on by magnets. Dust filter. And you can see you have clear access up top here for radiators. Get into that in a second. So here we have a door which opens up like this. This exposes all of your cable and wire management. There's a couple of uh, fan hubs here that Corsair provides you where your fans are hooked in. This is your RGB. This is your power. No, I think this is your power. This is your RGB anyway. So you, that's going to plug into a USB on your board. There's your power uh, power cable there. SATA power cable to your fans. And here are all your front panel stuff. This case comes complete with two USB 3.0s. Uh, front panel and a USB type C front panel power button, reset button, and an audio jack. Here you can see where the 2.5 inch SSDs can be mounted. There's also a rack down here at the bottom which is removable for your 3.5 inch drives. And then I've already taken this out. This is your accessory case with all your screws that you need and some Velcro straps for your wire management. Pretty sturdy case. Looks like this is going to be fun to build in. Can't wait to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put some parts in here. I'm going to be using fairly basic parts. An MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk board, AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. We're not going over the top with the parts, but what I also have that I'm going to be putting in, as you can see this motherboard does have white stripes, so that's going to help go with the white theme. And I also have the Corsair Vengeance RGB 32 gigs white memory and I have an SS uh, M.2 installed in here. This is all specs that my customer wanted. So whatever my customer wants, my customer is going to get. Got a thousand watt power supply going in. But here's the other feature item that I'm going to be putting in here, which I think is pretty good. This guy is the IQH150i Elite LCD XT. It's Extreme Performance 360 LCD Liquid CPU Cooler. And this is a IPS display on this heat sink here and pump. It's uh, so that's gonna be really interesting. All, everything is Corsair themed, except for the motherboard, of course, and the power supply. We're gonna see how well the IQ software syncs up to all of this RGB goodness. So let me start off by getting the motherboard installed on this and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, one thing I want to point out that you need to watch for with this case and this particular IQ H150i water cooler is that if you notice in this case there is a, a there's a panel where the cutout is for the back of the processor and there's this controller here that is mounted to that with the appropriate fan cables going to them. Keep this in mind 
this IQ water cooler, you need a, for, for Intel motherboards, you need the, this back plate. You're not going to be able to get this back plate on there if the board's installed without taking all of this off and removing the, this panel. It'll save you a little bit of work on Intel motherboards just to go ahead and put this back plate for Intel on the motherboard first and then install your motherboard. It'll save you from having to take all this off. In my case, I'm going AMD and AMD, the IQ water cooler requires the stock back plate to your AMD AM4 motherboard. So you would think that, well, that almost says I have two choices now. I'll go ahead and take off all this cabling and this controller and this panel and then install the board and then install, use this have access to the back plate. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use double-sided tape to stick this back plate to the motherboard. And that way I don't have to remove this, go through all the hassle and the work of removing that. Either way, you do it how you want to do it. Um, I'm trying to keep from having to sort all this out and or mess with it at all. So we're going to do, do a little double-sided tape to stick this to the back of the board and don't have to mess with taking all that off. Save me some work. Let's see how that goes. Okay, and as you can see, I went on ahead and, and put these uh, screws in here to hold to even help hold that back plate even further. So we don't have to worry about that back plate coming off now at all. And I didn't have to go through all the trouble of removing that back panel. So that worked out well. Now I just get the, uh, get the motherboard secured with the motherboard screws. All the standoffs are preset to ATX boards. This case takes ITX, MATX, and ATX. The standoffs are pre-installed for ATX boards, so that worked out well. Here's a pro tip for you on the H150i water cooler. It comes pre-installed with an Intel bracket. In order to change that bracket, you have to take this cover off, this plastic cover. You pull the bracket out apart. It comes in two pieces. Then you install the AMD brackets on here on both sides and that'll allow you to fit your AMD socket. The only problem with that is is once you do that this plastic case does not fit back on. Well I want to I want to protect all of the thermal material here so <clears throat> the instructions tell you to go ahead and swap out your bracket here first but I don't want to do that because like I said, I don't, want to, I don't want to disturb that thermal material. So I'm going to go ahead and do that after I mount the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and test fit this and see how it's going to kind of mount up in there. Take off the top filter so I can see better, have access to it and just let the pump there just dangle, no problem. And this is going to mount up top this. I'm going to keep it as far this way towards the front as possible because I have this water loop here to, to contend with. So I'm going to go ahead and just loosely mount this up here with the fans and uh, we'll see how it goes. First, we'll go ahead and mount the fans, making sure that they're facing the proper direction. I want this to be exhaust. So we just use these screws to just mount the fans onto the radiator. Oh, we also want to make sure that our fan cables are facing the right direction. So this is wrong. We want the cables to be on this side so we can just route them directly out the back. So keep that in mind too, something to watch out for. So I have everything kind of loose fitted up in here, meaning that I only have two screws up here holding down the radiator and as far over this way as possible because 
you can see here how close this tubing is to this rear fan. So I want as much clearance as possible this way. Two things that I have uh, noted here. So I've mounted my fans first before I mounted the radiator. I've undone my cables. Two things that I notice. So help anybody who's uh, building one with this particular cooler. I now have no room hardly at all. I don't have any room to feed my fan cables up to the slots where the cables are supposed to go. Two things we can do. You can, well, I don't even think it would work. You could mount the fans after the radiator's mounted, but you're gonna really have a hard time tightening up these screws on the back side. So what I'm gonna have to do is, as I'm raising this to mount it, I'm gonna have to feed these through the appropriate eyelets as I go before I mount. I guess the really good news is, is I have simulated how this cooler is going to be mounted and if I line that up where this is going to be you can see that that tubing does clear the fan so that's really good news so I'm going to that's another reason why I didn't go ahead and put all the screws in here I'm going to take these back out I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to feed these lines as I raise it before I mount it it's going to take a little bit of a balancing act but that's what I'm going to do and you can see here exactly why I didn't want to take that plastic cover off because I don't want to be worried about that you have this also to contend with so that's very interesting too hmm because this has to go up and through wow let me think about that okay guys I'm rethinking this from here it doesn't look like you can feed much of anything up through here you can see a little bit of light there where my finger is because we got to feed these lines up through there too Boy, look at that, that's right. But a different perspective here. If I come up here, you can see my finger right here. There is the lip, the opening right there to feed lines through. So I can get my finger up through there. If I could get my finger up through there, I can get those lines through there. That's gonna be my only option. I'm gonna try to feed those lines through there, see how that goes. And then I think I can still feed this up through here somewhere and then maybe wiggle it over. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I'm rethinking things again. So what I've now realized is that after this has been mounted up here like this, I have no room to feed my CPU power cable through there. I don't know, I might be able to get it. I might be able to get it. Ha, huh. cable mods. That's what needs to go through there. There we go. Here's my cable mod. Well, at the end of the day, I didn't drop this. I was able to feed those lines up. It was very tight but you saw me do it. Now the only thing is I gotta get these back there. Um, that's gonna be a bit awkward, but I don't think I have enough room to feed it there, but we'll have to play around with it and see. I'm gonna get this pump mounted now, I think. Um, well, I have to in order for me to, maybe I'll try to feed that through before I mount the pump just to see if I can get it through there. I probably can. Let me play around with that a minute. Okay. I can make this work. I can make this work, no problem. I can I can get that up there and, and finagle it and get it through there so I don't have to worry about dropping that radiator again, thank goodness. Um, pretty confident of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and change out this um, brackets. And you want to, these simply just separate and pull off like that. And then on goes the A and D. Okay, bottom ones. Here's how we're looking so far in the front. I haven't taken off the protective cover there yet. Tighten up these little wires up here. I've already got one cable mod run here to the CPU power. Got the video card in, the 4060 Ti. Haven't got that cable mod in there yet. Um, wow, look how close, look how close that fan is to this. But it, it's free, it doesn't touch it. Um, I think it's better to come around like that than come from this other side because these tubes will probably blend in with this white. I think it stands out pretty good right there. Clean in the front. Looking pretty good. Not too bad. And But here's what we're looking at in the back. <laughs> oh, lovely, huh? Yep, and it's just going to get worse. I still got the, the power supply to put in and the cable mods to put in here. So I've already kind of connected up. This is the hub here for the uh, water cool fans, the RGB and the power to that. And then we got the main cable going to the LCD display on the on the pump there. That's that, what that cable's for. And of course, we gotta connect that to SATA power and we have to connect this to the USB header on the motherboard. This is also here, power. 
to this controller and we have to plug that into USB on the board. This is for the case fans. I'm going to probably mount this guy. I took out this uh, bracket. Probably going to mount, probably going to mount that right there. That's where I'm going to mount that, I think. So I think that'll work out just fine. She's not having any uh, drives put in except for that one M.2. Anyways, cable management is definitely going to be something that's going to be fun, but let me go ahead. I'm going to mount this here, and then I'm going to take care of all these small fan cables first before I start running my other cable mods. So let's see how that's going to turn out. They give you 3M tape double-sided to mount that hub with. So let's check it out. Okay, here's a little update to some of my cable management that I've done. The fan cables are pretty nicely bundled now. So that's going to definitely help. We're going to work on cable mods next. Yeah, so far I'm happy with the way this uh, cable management is working on, on this case. They, they give you some nice straps to work with. You can put some extra straps in if you want to. Still got some work to do. This is what we're looking like so far from inside the case. Still got some tidying up to do. I'm looking quite nice though. I'm going to do some more kind of cable management. Some of these things are kind of bugging me a little bit, but I can tighten that up. Got all my front panel header and everything else down there, USBs and all that. Let's see how we're looking on the other side of this. Okay, as you can see, a little more progress has been made on this, but now you can see my, my cable mods um, are now added of course and i've got these few other things here to, to button up everything's plugged in everything is good to go just got to do my cable management here um this door will be able to close that's key also that's going to be pushed there that's going to be pushed there and this door should be able to close okay only one thing left to do oh we got fans we got lights 26 is good they just lit up. Fans just lit up. Come on, give me my post. Yes. Yes. 26C. Look at that. Well, here is the final results of this build. Turned out really nice, I must say. Looks good. Nice white build, love it. Looks very good. All the, all the RGBs on this is customizable using the IQ software. Open up IQ here. You can see all of my devices. Pay close attention to the LCD on the water cooler there because I can go up so you can see I've got different different ones here that I can use and we can even add a customizable one uh, there's one here that says image gif and that is where you can change to whatever gif you want I'm going to click that now that's the default gif and you got these different ones it's nice Really nice cooler. Temperatures are lovely. Look at that. Great, look at the clock. That's super cool. That's super, super cool. Or you can just turn it off all together. Perfect. I'll leave it on default for my customer. All of the RGB lights are, like I said, customizable also. So I think it really turned out really nice. I really did enjoy this build. I'm not a fan of RGB as everybody knows, but I tell you what, this one looks quite nice. I have to admit, the all white build with the, the state of the art RGB fans, just love it. Yep, I might be, I might be changing my thoughts on some RGBs now. I mean, that does not look bad. Anyway, hope everybody enjoyed this video. 
Go out and build you a computer, everybody. You'll love it. Links to these parts are down in the description below this video. Help support my channel. You can use my links. I'm Tim with Tim's Computer. See you soon.